the uh, Cinder remix of Dark Souls 3 by Rotaka. Folks, you know what that song means. I mean, 99 rounds later. I hard not to. Yeah, I sure hope we both know what that song means. Because oh, yeah, absolutely. We are coming up on the big triple digits. Not tonight yet, though. Not tonight, because this is round 99 of Insert Credits. Time lies. You have round 96 up, by the way? Oh, no. Do I? <laughs> Son of a... I changed that yesterday. I guess it did not save. All right. Well, that's easy enough to, to correct. That's, that's from multiple rounds ago. I how don't do? know how that happens, but it's fine. It's time lies now. Don't worry about it. Um, can't fix that in post, exactly. unfortunately. <laughs> See? Time lies. There you go. Oh, my, my goodness. goodness. It's so appropriate. <laughs> can't believe intentional. you planned this in advance. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody. I'm Mr. Bond. And I'm Tormod. Uh, and it's time for Insert Credits again. This is our uh, monthly uh, game podcast. We talk about some news, we play some cool tunes, we talk about what we've been playing since last time, we play some more cool tunes, and then we do some design at the end, which is always a real good time. Um, this time, time will not lie, it will be a very good time <laughs> at the end. Ha <laughs> ha. Both get that name drop in there, why not? Housekeeping, uh, speaking of trip digits, round 100 is next month. There is. March. Looks like 18th is what we have written down. Does that still work? Hmm. Still works for me, but hmm. we can always move it if we need to. Ooh. Uh -oh. hmm. <laughs> Very conveniently, it's the day after St. Patrick's it Day. Is. It so, is. yeah, that, mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see if we can uh, maybe make something happen that weekend. But yes, yes, it works quite well. Okay, very good. And then, of course, 101. Ooh. Oh, hey, don't forget, uh -huh. earlier that week, daylight savings starts. Oh, good, 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 good. An hour more of daylight. Yes, sun. Please. Thank you. Yes. Praises. More, more, more. Okay, and then round 101 in April. It looks like we have down the 15th. Yep, still good for me. Very good. Dead center of the month. And then 102 looks like we can put on the books. Hey, hey look at that. There's a Friday the 13th. That yep, seems that, natural, that, doesn't it? It is de facto required. All right. Round 102 set for May 13th. Excellent. Very good. Well, we only like to go about three rounds out. Any further than that, and time starts to do weird things, including lie. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll just keep it there for now. I don't think there are any other housekeeping items to take care of. So let's head on into Around the World. Some news, 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 news. Oh boy, the company that will not stop giving us news, Activision Blizzard. <laughs> First some good news. First some good news to come out of that. Raven Software, a subsidiary of Activision Blizzard, responsible for Call of Duty series, their QA team has successfully formed a union. All right. You go, everybody. Power, power, power to you. That's excellent. Oh, yeah. Um, it de okay, and it depends on... Well, I don't know what it depends on, really, if you consider this good or bad news. But uh, Microsoft is apparently going to be acquiring Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. That's billion with a B. Assuming the SEC allows them to do that. Correct, of course. <laughs> there are the the... Oh, always ever-present caveats of if it passes regulatory muster, et cetera, et cetera. But and Microsoft, oh. of course, antitrust, et cetera, you know, it's mm -hmm. got a history there. Right? But, oh boy, I remember, however many years ago it was, uh, time is very fluid, when we were balking at $2 billion for Microsoft's acquisition of Mojang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so and we now, thought that was ridiculous. Yeah, and it still was ridiculous. And this uh -huh. is just another order of magnitude above, so... Mm. It's extremely inflated. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, given Activision Blizzard's uh, very recent spate of troubles, not to say that that's their only troubles, but the very recent spate of troubles, 68.7 seems a little high. Um, and probably the one unquestionable bit of bad news with this is that, unfortunately, Bobby Kotick will be staying on until after the merger. Um, Dang it, Bobby! Exactly, he's not getting out of there sooner. It's unfortunate. <sighs> but hey, we'll see if one, it goes through because of regulatory concerns, and two, if it gets any better post this thing, if it does in fact go through. Mm. Don't know. We'll just have to wait and see how it plays out, as we are wont to do most times. 
Other acquisition news, uh, Sony, very shortly after the Microsoft acquisition announcement for Activision Blizzard, uh, will be acquiring Bungie for $3.6 billion, billion with a B. So significantly less. It's only 5% of the <laughs> other, but yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, it is only 5%. And that's, mm. that's wild. That's still a wild amount of money for an acquisition of any sort, really. Um... But Bungie does not own the rights to Halo anymore. Like, that got spun off to 343 Industries, so... Hmm. And we're not gonna see PlayStation Halo. Ever. No, no, we will not. But... Okay, we'll say that now, but like 25 years <laughs> in the future. It's probably gonna be a thing. Right. The 17th remaster of Halo 1, I don't know. Right. Well, but, they're only up to you know. two remasters of that one, I think. <laughs> I sure. don't remember. I know there's the Master Chief know. collection. I think there was one prior to that, but I don't remember <laughs> which platform uh, it was. It's the Remaster Chief collection. Oh boy. That's an easy I one. I just thought of that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a real easy one. That's a good one, but it's a real easy one to make. Oh boy. Okay, so on to some better news then. Uh, a fan modder has released remastered Warcraft 3 campaign files. Hooray! Ooh. You know that whole thing with the. Uh, Blizzard kind of dropping the ball on the Warcraft 3 reforged thing. Well, somebody I else. I forgot it was a thing. Right? Somebody else <laughs> stepped up and, and said, ah, to hell with it. Here's some remix maps. Here's some better textures. Here's all this extra stuff. So, uh, cool. Neat. That's good. Uh, um, it sounds like people are near universally happy with it. So, kudos. Uh, here's hoping they don't get... DMCA, TOS, uh, I don't know, whatever applies to this sort of thing. But typically, the modding community has been pretty good for Blizzard titles, and then Blizzard in turn, surprisingly enough, has been pretty good towards the modding community. So, And then people just not giving a fuck anyway. So, Exactly, you know. exactly. So either way, it's out there now, and it is apparently good. So excellent. Good news. Good news. You know, I actually am going to throw in some legal stuff right now that sure. I just remembered. So Nintendo has been going after someone for jailbreaking mm. a console and doing some shit with it and had been real hard up that person's ass, um, basically saying, hey, legal system, we want we want some prison time for this guy. So maybe you should do the needful. And eventually, apparently they got their way. Um, today, there was a three year sentence that was uh, laid upon that person. And yeah, so Nintendo wanted to make an example of hey maybe don't do this shit with their stuff but mm, yeah the whole kind of touching the uh, nerve there thing yeah mm -hmm. good job nintendo mm -hmm. you're just as stupid as you always have been <laughs> but i i, I kind of figured i had to throw that in there no that's good because i was thinking yeah. about writing that down earlier today and i'm like no nah, i got enough other legal crap to to go over tonight so I'll leave that off. But I'm glad well, you brought it up anyways, because, you know, that's kind of... It was crappy, and it's legal, so there you go. Yeah, well, hey, it tracks. It tracks 100% mm -hmm. there. Speaking of legal things, um, that whole Epic versus Apple thing is still going on, what with the judgment handed down ostensibly in Apple's favor quite some time ago. Uh, Epic is still appealing it. And now several state attorneys general have joined in effectively on Epic's side, saying, hey... Uh, Apple is kind of abusing its marketplace power here, what with the whole iOS app store and all that. So, uh, we'll see what the support of those state attorneys general actually does in the whole balance of things here. Uh, appeal is still ongoing okay. from Epic side, so... Mm. And, you know, those state attorneys general are the highest legal authority of individual states. So they may actually throw some weight around and cause something to happen. Right. As if nothing had been happening for multiple years with this bullshit. But hey, here we are. It's still more drama. Yeah, it surely is. And hey, maybe it'll carry more weight than other tech heavyweights throwing their opinions into the legal system, too. So, hmm. Fair enough. I'm sure more will develop as time passes with that, too. That is another news item that will never die. <laughs> and sort of legal adjacent here, uh, you recall not too long ago, our friends at Witchbeam releasing their second game, Unpacking, a very cute and charming little game about unpacking after a move. 
Mm. Unfortunately, a couple weeks after their said release of Unpacking, there was clones of it on the iOS app store. And one of those of clones course. happened to make it to one of the top apps in said store. And it's only just recently removed. Finally. Ugh. Good lord. Um, one, that sucks because clones generally suck. Uh, way to just ape off of everybody's hard work. Mm -hmm. And two, why was it allowed to reach the top spot before it got yanked? And three, ugh, that sucks to have it happen to, especially an indie studio. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One that I hold a special place for in my heart, of course, uh, since they did Salt Android Cactus, naturally. Um, but it sucks in general. So glad to see that that clone has finally gotten pulled. Uh, it sucks that it happened in the first place. Naturally. Yep. All right. Well, I hope on balance all that news was at least neutral but that's all i got for tonight what about you okay so i kind of focused on the nintendo direct this time with one notable exception i guess but we'll, we'll, we'll save the best for last of course i'm not biased at all <laughs> um so yeah this nintendo direct uh we kind of figured it was gonna happen and then it got scheduled a couple days ago and then it happened and was it everything people expected no was it everything we deserved no <laughs> But it was actually fairly dense and substantial, which uh, compared to recent stuff is a change of pace. So y'all remember Chrono Trigger? Mm-hmm. Good game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yasunori Mitsuda made the music. It was a mm -hmm. great time. One mm -hmm. of the hands down single best games of the SNES. Uh, it had a sequel in 3D, which was pretty markedly different. And it was... Uh, it was a time. Uh, Chrono Cross was very interesting at the time where you had, you know, your colors and having things match up and it kind of affected the way the battle flow happened and et cetera, et cetera. So a little known, a uh, little interlude between the two games that was released on the broadcast system um, was Radical Dreamers. And I have forced as many people as I could possibly think of to sit through that and go through its many, many endings, because what would a Chrono game be without multiple endings? Except not Chrono Cross, maybe? I don't know. Shrug. Mm -hmm. um, so Radical Dreamers is a text-based game, essentially. It, it says, hey, you're in the atrium. Which direction do you want to go? And it's like, oh, cool. This is like Rogue or something. Um, so it's cool. Um, Radical Dreamers was a thing. And it had a fanlation. And it removed the weird time restrictions and whatnot. And generally, it was pretty cool. Um, most people, because it was only released as a fan translation, never actually saw that. Well, somehow, decades after Chrono Cross was a thing, and even more since Radical Dreamers, uh, Nintendo's like, hey, guess what? We're going to remaster, sort of, uh, Chrono Cross and put it on Switch. And I was just like, where the fuck did that come from? But OK, cool. Um, so Chrono Cross is getting the Radical Dreamers edition, which includes Radical Dreamers, translated in English um, with a little higher resolution and Chrono Cross has the same going on. So you've got some uh, HDFI textures and character models and whatnot and some quality of life improvements like turning off battle encounters and things like that. So as I mentioned, Yasunori Mitsuda, uh, the composer of the series, um, yeah, apparently was quite involved in remastering the soundtrack with an all new orchestral score and all sorts of goodies. And that's really the reason I'm excited for it, because I mean, I play Radical Dreamers and I thought it was fantastic. Never really actually played Chrono Cross. Eh, maybe I should. Maybe this is my opportunity to do that. But the soundtrack, though. So Misuda's new orchestral score is going to be something to look out for. And uh, speaking of looking out for it, what's today's date? The 11th? Yeah, this the is coming 11th. out in less than yeah. two months. <laughs> oh, so wow. this is coming out on the 7th of April. Surprise! Surprise! So, yeah. So, um, yeah, two shows from now might be a brief review, maybe, if I have time to actually play video games or something like that. But, yeah, I'm probably going to be picking that up, despite the things that are going on because it's inescapable and I'm not going to mention it because I, it just makes me sad. We're done with the bad news, right? Yes, right? I hope so, because you're talking about all this cool Nintendo shit going on. I could never yeah. quite wrap my head around Chrono Cross. I tried to pick it up a couple times, but there was kind of the weird battle systems going on, even though the color thing mm -hmm. was kind of neat. And then it was mm -hmm. in part of that era where 
Every animation just took so damn long. And I do not have the patience anymore to sit through that kind of thing. So it's just like, all right, come on, get on with it, get on with it. So it was kind of made worse by the fact that it was a CD mm -hmm. game and everything had slow ass read times and it was on the PS1. And you know how the uh, ports, I'm, I'm going to call them very loosely <laughs> very ports loose, because they yeah. were shit. Uh, Final Fantasy anthologies, etc. Um, the the version of Chrono Trigger that was played off a of CD was fucking slow as shit. Oh. Yeah, so like you know how in Chrono Trigger for SNES you you like walk into an enemy and it's like oh shit, there's an encounter now. Right, active battles. Right. Yeah. Right, so you walk into an enemy on the disc version of it and you sit there and you sit there. Oh. And you sit there. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, yeah, okay. gross. So, yeah, so it it kind of suffered from that. But now it's being read off of a cartridge and, you know, you've got flat files and you can read things into memory and it's got a machine that isn't from the 90s, etc. So in theory, it should be a much better experience just from not having discs. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, let's move on. Everybody expected Mario Kart 9. There had been rumors flying around. <laughs> there had been rumors flying around that they were skipping 9 because 9 was the AR thing. Tour? I don't remember. I, I kind of mm -hmm. refused to mm -hmm. pick it up. Um, but Mario Kart 8 came out on the Wii U. And then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out shortly after the Switch's release. And it just kind of sat there. So 8 Deluxe came out. And it included all of the DLC from the Wii U release. And it added double item boxes. That's it. And we sat and sat and sat for all these years since the launch of the Switch. And now instead of releasing a new Mario Kart game because Nintendo's come out and basically said that the Switch is in the middle of its life cycle. Cool. So we're going to get anything other than ports? Maybe? OK, fine. Yeah, we're getting a few things. But Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, um, it's receiving new DLC. Um, and it's not just a. Uh, for uh cup packs of four races each no it's 48 total tracks which is actually substantial that's as many tracks as you've got with eight deluxe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um the original eight came with 32 you had the additional 16 etc um so these are being rolled out um incrementally over time the first release is going to be on the 18th of march and it'll stop by the end of 2023 and they're calling this the booster course pass so you can either buy it by itself for $24.99 and it gets you all 48 tracks, or you can um, give all your money to Pimp Daddy uh, Nintendo for your Switch Online now with Expansion Pass um, thing, which I had been kind of refusing for a while because their N64 implementation was god-awful, mm -hmm. continues to be, with minor improvements now. But... Uh, I decided, you know what? More than one of us on this family plan are going to want this thing. It's more economical just to pay for the pass upgrade and suck it up. So, congrats. You now can uh, experience the new, I guess, cups. They're probably just going to be released in several cups at a time. Maybe? Shrug? Two? Three, I think two at two? a time was one I, what I last read, but that could have already changed. Cool. Well, you don't need the booster course pass because you have this subscription. So I'm going to be excited for that. There's already some kind of controversy going around, though, because it's Nintendo. Why wouldn't there be? Um, their main selling point on this thing was that they are essentially ports of tracks from their games. I don't even think that they have new shit coming in, but fine. I mean, what's a Mario Kart game without a bunch of tracks from earlier games? I so, mean, personally, I like the 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 reduxes of the old tracks. Like, I remember playing oh, them in their original forms on the original games. It was neat. It was kind of neat that they yeah. brought a lot of those forward. Now, yeah. the, the entire pack being that is kind of, hmm, but... Eh. <laughs> so, for instance, uh, they decided to show off Maple Treeway. Is that the name of the track? Mm -hmm, I, I just mm -hmm. know it's the Maple thing. Okay, yeah. Right? So they yeah. showed off Maple Treeway, and people were like, this feels a little uncanny, but OK, go on. And after the Nintendo Direct ended and people are like pulling screen caps and comparing the new and old versions, there weren't a lot of differences at all. And then they started comparing against the extremely polished tracks that came with the game. 
and I guess the subsequent DLC. And they mm. noticed that the graphic style on the newer stuff, at least what was shown, is very simplistic. It doesn't have that realistic touch that the existing tracks in 8 had. Hmm. That would be so there's some people that are just kind of like, is this the final version of this? Is this what we're getting? Is this what we're going to expect for the rest of the 48? So that, that kind of remains to be seen, of course, mm. because we've just got a brief taste of things. But I guess it's new content, and it doesn't require ROM hacks, I guess. Well, it's, so, it's something .jpg, but still, if that's going to be the case for the final content, huh... Yeah, so if you're interested in seeing some of these side-by-side -side screen caps, just go to the Twitters and search Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Pack and yeah, or pass, sorry. And you'll you'll see some interesting stuff. Um, it, it's kind of like Fisher-Price, my first Mario Kart, a little bit, hmm. a little bit. Because now, you know, it's the same kind of like shiny, plasticky look, except now in 1080p. <laughs> so... But other franchises received some huge news. Um, Splatoon 3, Salmon Run Next Wave is releasing this summer. Surprise! Um, people have been champing at the bit for anything Splatoon related for a long time now. Splatoon 2 is kind of old. Um, Splatoon 3, though, everybody was pretty amped up about that. I don't really play the game, uh, but apparently there are lots of interesting things with this release that people are looking forward to. So good on you. Don't really have much to say about that. Uh, Kirby, though, everybody was expecting things for the anniversary of the Kirby series. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. It's releasing huh. on uh, the 25th of March. That's like seven weeks from now. Not even uh, six weeks now. Shit. All right. Um, yeah, so Kirby can have copy abilities like every other Kirby game ever. Right. But this time you can power them up and evolve them with uh, going to the shop, I guess, hmm. which is a little weird. But yeah, sure. It's all the same kind of copy abilities that you've had from ever, um, and you can make them power more powerful over time. But also now Kirby's boring cars and cones. Uh. And yeah, so uh, everybody, as soon as they saw Kirby oh, suck no. up a car, <laughs> they're like, oh, this is Kirby now. And it instantly brought me back to Ikea. But anyway, uh. um, so yeah, um, I don't remember specifically what this game mechanic is called because he's not like actually fully engulfing these things, but he's taking their shape in order to go through certain obstacles, which absolutely isn't reminiscent of Super Mario Odyssey at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not at all. So, yeah, um, that's a thing. And it was kind of polarizing and it still continues to be so, but uh, it's another way to have variety throughout the various Kirby levels that everybody expected. And now there's like little fox demon enemy things. I don't know what the hell they call them in those games, but they're cute. And everyone's like, oh, my God, they're adorable. And I get to eat them. The whole series is about consuming your enemies. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's that's Kirby to a T. Yeah. Um, if you ever watched uh, Sonic for Hire. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I envision <laughs> Kirby. Now that 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 series Oops. has kind of perverted anything pure about uh. that little Pink oh. diarrhea chunk ball oh, there. Oh no, our sweet boy Kirby. How dare he be corrupted? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, that looks really cool. And again, that's coming out on the 25th of March, which is a flat six weeks from now. Holy shit. Huh. Mm. And you, you want to know what else is having a big anniversary right now? Please, it's the Zelda series. Please zero, please. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Radio Silence. Nothing even uh. mentioning the word Zelda the entire time. Now, either that means that they're planning a separate direct for, oh shit, we owe you some Batwa 2 news, right. or maybe there's going to be a Zelda maker because that would be fucking mm, badass. Uh. And it's what people have been expecting since Mario Mark you came out. Nah, I don't know. So we're just kind of sitting here in a holding pattern, waiting for something. I Meanwhile, everybody's pouring over all of those two trailers that were released ever since the game was announced. Huh, this yeah. game's coming out this year? Uh, that's huh. what they say, I guess. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Nothing to say there. Thanks, Nintendo. I mean, I think they knew that if they so much as breathed, haha, a word about it in that <laughs> direct, people would immediately forget about everything else they would have said in that direct. That is a fair point, but... 
Maybe. Even um, like a couple days after, be like, we didn't forget about you. Just give <laughs> us like three weeks or something. Or something. Just hint at something. Like, I don't know. Of all like the big first party console and or game development companies, I think Nintendo probably has the best track record about leaks and shit. So yeah. I'm not surprised they're being tight lipped about it. I'm a little bit surprised we haven't heard anything about it. Well Yeah. That's a little bit disingenuous, but yeah. I don't know. I don't blame them for, for not saying much about it still. Like I'd I'd love them for just to keep a lid on it for a while and then surprise, here's this, you know, two hours of gameplay footage or something, and then it's fucking amazing. Like that'd be great. More Releases of that. in three days. Hey, ah. even that would be yeah. <laughs> That would be a little much. I don't know if my heart could take that, but that would be pretty cool also. Uh, that would be a good fuck off to all the haters. But It really yeah. would be. I, I mean, give me about what too. So, yeah, looking forward to it. If that's still happening this year, maybe maybe we can have it before nuclear death. Mm, maybe if we're lucky, <laughs> if we've been good, we can have it as a treat. All right. Well, the one thing that I care about during this entire time, no, that's a lie. Um, the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster now has a release date. It is releasing on Wednesday, the 23rd of February. Gasp! Holy shit. That's like wow. less than two weeks from that, now. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so, be still my heart. Um, yeah, Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. Uh, Square decided that they were just going to tweet um, some interesting stuff. Uh, they had the opening FMV without all of the name scrolling stuff going on, but they also had the intro FMV version of Terra's theme in there. And it was surprisingly faithful to the original. Hmm. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they did. Um, some screenshots from various parts of the game are released some time ago. You remember that opera scene? Vaguely. You know, Celeste is kind of dancing around. You have to like yeah. choose the dialogue options. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, they kind of turned that into like a two and a half D octopathy thing. And that's, that's good hmm. because actually right. following around on the screen where you're supposed to dance and stuff that confused me the first time and I lost and I was like kind of devastated, but <laughs> I was like 12. So yeah, whatever. you got over it. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I kept playing it. Um, obviously. So they have made some changes to the game like that, but we haven't seen a whole lot of anything else other than like four screenshots. And now we've heard the intro theme before you step in an arch for the first time. So this game comes out in less than two weeks. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm still going to be traveling for work at that point. I am very likely going to try with substantial effort to actually get this thing streamed on release day. We'll try. We'll see. Hotel Internet. Yeah, it's the best. Um, Are you fully but... caught up with five? OK, so <laughs> uh -oh. yes, maybe I shouldn't have said anything. I should have waited until next segment. There's more on that, um, but yes, I'm caught up with five. I have one final stream to do of that game. And I just want to be done with it. That is one of the longer Final Fantasy games because of the yeah. stuff that happens inside oh, the game yeah. and the. Anyway, I'm not going to spoil it. I'll spoil it next segment, though. <laughs> I mean, I know what goes on inside that game, unless they significantly like messed shit around for the remaster. I mean, I would have been. Possibly pleasantly surprised, but no, no, it's very faithful to the original SNES release. Oh, I thought the original SNES release is pretty good. But... Was, no, don't get me wrong. It's just um, long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, well, I'll just put it this way. I, I got the last crystal shard. If you remember what's involved mm -hmm. with that, mm -hmm. I had to remember what was involved with that because we had played that like over 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. God, so yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it it. It took some time, but we'll get to that. <laughs> well, very good. Whilst we're stewing on that, apparently it's time for some tune skis, huh? Hell yeah. All right. First section of tune skis, as you say, we start with The Chicken's Tale by expert novice from The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. 
followed by A Glitch Hops World by Spades from Deltarune and ending with Where Cold and Hot, Where Hot and Cold Collide, damn it. Where Hot and Cold Collide by Nosylvania for the Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs>
All right, with another month past, hopefully another month of at least some gaming has occurred. Some I, I think I kind of spoiled that already for myself. <laughs> yeah, yes. a little bit, but hey, why not? I mean, that's good. It's good that you're you're playing some games and you're having some fun. You know, oh yeah. In spite of or because of the situation, whichever it doesn't matter. I can be stuck in place and play games. Exactly. I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of the video games and the technology we possess is uh, yeah. that it can happen anywhere, anytime, no matter what. And soon, also with the Steam Deck. Ah, yes, that is true. Hopefully, <laughs> they ship on time. Yeah, allegedly, mine's being released in quarter two, which I guess oh, is the okay. soonest that they're coming out. So That's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll see how that goes. But <laughs> I, I totally forgot to mention that. Like, yep, they're they're on track to ship or start shipping allegedly by the end of February, and who knows when they'll actually get to people. But yes, right. done, cool, right. right. <laughs> But what have you been playing? Well, okay. I've got a fairly sizable list here. Um, as you do. Yep, yeah, as I do. So <laughs> last show, I was just about wrapping up with Unsighted. Um, and since that time, I've wrapped up with Unsighted. Very fun game. I spent one full playthrough on the main game. I did a little bit of boss rush and a little bit of a weird kind of dungeon crawler mode they included in there, too. Interesting. It's like they they built in sort of a, a a roguelike procedurally generated dungeon crawler into the game itself, which was really fun. In fact, cool. It's like a, a neat little like twenty to thirty minute one shot type thing, and it, it included all the all the main aspects of the of the actual game, plus all the weapons, plus all the abilities and all that. But you got to clear like these multi room dungeons, and at the end of each little area, you got to pick between two and three rewards, like a a new item or a new upgrade or a new ability or and then you can go to a shop and spend some of the money that you picked up and it was really kind of neat and dynamic um awesome. certainly encourage you to go to go fast too which was a, a fun change of pace since i tend to take my time on some of those things sure. um but unsighted is now is now complete very fun game hardly recommended um shout outs one one more last time to firetron for recommending that game to me so very much appreciated awesome. Um, and after Unsighted, I've started up with Cogmind. Um, Cogmind is probably a game as close to NetHack as I've ever played, aside from NetHack. Um, okay. It is still in early access, as has been in early access for years, years plural, um, at least three or four, I want to say. Um, that's not to say it's it's unfinished like that. I'm presuming there's an end and I just haven't gotten to it because I am notoriously terrible at these kinds of games. But yeah. uh, it is quite fun. I, I, I'd best describe it as net hack, but like robot apocalypse um, where, okay. you, where you are the robot, uh, <laughs> essentially. And you're trying to survive by bolting pieces of scrap and, and items and weapons onto yourself and nice. pre presumably... I, like, I don't know. I, don't, I can't really follow the lore very well because there's always okay. shit popping off. Um, but you're trying to ascend instead of descend into a dungeon, right? And you, you pick up scraps of lore along the way alongside scraps of items and shit. Um, mm. And there comes a certain time, usually around, let's see, usually around like level seven or eight as you're going along where... Shit just goes south in a big damn hurry. <laughs> okay. And I, I'm guessing it's because of the way I play. It's like I see an enemy, I'm going to go murder it um, because I want what they have or I want the experience points to be able to level up and, and all that. And then alarms start going off and then they just send more and more after you and more alarms start going off. And then suddenly the game becomes very unhappy with your existence and it ends. <laughs> so this sounds more like the Monster Zoo than Sokoban at that point. Uh, it really does feel like that many okay. times. It really does. Cool. There is something to be said about perhaps playing the game a bit more stealth focused than I tend to do. Um, sure. That would probably help me get further. <laughs> but I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much of, all right, let's, let's run around and, and shoot and kill and, and get cool shit and let's move on. When they really want it's a, it's a turn-based game like that heck is so you have time it's not like you don't have time to think about stuff 
It's just that I don't. <laughs> but it so is very like fun. You go back and watch the VODs on these because it is extremely. I, the fun. only, the only thing I remember you saying about this one, at least when you were getting going on it, was that uh, the text was hard to read on yeah. stream, and yeah. you had to do some optimization so that it came across more clearly. Yeah, thankfully, after the first stream of that, we did find a a very much better way to do it. Um, all right, cool. And it really just involved one one font tweak in game, which is really nice that they provide. And and broadcasting at 1080 instead of 720 um, was really all that needed to happen. And suddenly it's you know, readable, even for me, um, because that first night, even I had trouble reading it on my screen, which is about two feet from my face. So it's like, all right, yeah, sure. Something's got to change here. And, and, <laughs> yeah. it did, and, and it worked out better. So uh, I'm cool. going to give that game at least one more week. Who knows? Who knows by the end of this next week if I'm still feeling up to just keep it on going with it, because it is a lot of fun. And it, it has actually drawn quite a crowd for me. Um, apparently, word got around on the uh, developer's Discord that I was playing it too. Uh, Grid Sage Games, by the way, makes this game. Um, so suddenly, the, the first and second nights is like 10 plus folks wander in and say, hey, you're playing Cogmine, huh? I'm like, yeah, I sure am. <laughs> Although playing is uh, perhaps a bit charitable. Uh, I, I am trying. I am trying to engage with this Cogmine, as you can see. Um, but it is it is very fun, it, despite the frust the despite the natural frustration of net hack and net hack like games um, that inevitably occurs when you've got a good run going and then suddenly you don't have a good run going. Um, so hear me out. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> this sounds like the kind of game that if you had enough involvement in chat, you could easily turn this into something that you could do a charity stream with. Uh. Maybe not easily, but I can see it being feasible. Like intentionally taking or making stupid decisions. Or... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's plenty. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's turn based, so you got plenty of time to make decisions and and solicit feedback if you so choose, right? So, hmm. yeah, that's definitely a thing that could occur. Um, so, <laughs> could there be a possibility of something like Twitch plays Cogmind? Or like chat votes on the next action you take via some integration or something like that, because I think that would actually lend yeah. itself really strongly to it. Yeah, I, I don't see that being too onerous to do. In fact, the uh, probably because okay, I'm getting ideas for this now. <laughs> like the only thing I would say that goes against like the direct comparison of Twitch plays X or or whatever is that it is a fairly large area game, whereas mm -hmm. you know NetHack was pretty constrained to like. 40 by 120 uh, little tiles or whatever this these levels get yeah. very very large so it would take a long time for like a direct twitch plays cogmind analog to to sort through it but it would definitely be possible huh okay now i'm getting an idea of something like crowd control oh good lord the game is yeah, hard, hard enough without it honestly <laughs> i know no shit this sounds really cool I'm getting ideas for potentially an ad hoc game at some point, but obviously I don't want to rip off Cogmine because it right. sounds really fucking badass. Right. It is good. And but, I, I definitely mm. recommend, like, I, there's very few games that I have played that I wouldn't recommend that people pick up and play, but this one especially is, like, you should pick up and play. It's really fun. Like, maybe even if you're not yeah, okay. super into the net hack genre, roguelike, jo ro actual roguelike genre, not the roguelites that we're all well familiar with. Even so if you're permadeath, not, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perma okay. Permadeath okay. starting from scratch, no in-between upgrades or anything like that. Like, even if people aren't real down to clown with that sort of thing, like, Cogmine is pretty fun. Like, it's it's great. Yeah, like, I, I first, before getting the idea for getting chat slash crowd interaction going with it, was like, this sounds like the or the kind of game that I've enjoy sitting there and watching you play things, but like suggesting things if you prompted me to. Like, what kind of stupid shit are we gonna run into if we like throw an ice beam at this thing or something? I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There is there is definitely enough even in its current state right now in early access or whatever. There is definitely enough diversity of items and weapons and utility skills and all of that to make that a definite viable possibility because apparently there okay. are some very strong opinions in the cogmine community about what you should be using as uh movement options um okay. because because Including there's what? there's wheels and treads and legs and hover units and flight 
and all this different stuff, which has varying characteristics yeah. of speed and and time it takes to 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 use your weapons and shit like that. Because there are some very and, and there are very strong opinions about which particular method of movement is is the correct one. <laughs> Mm, I and, see. And honestly, the answer is whatever one you have access to at the time. Um, uh, which is to say that, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of inventory management to it as well. Um, which okay. might put some folks off, but uh, yeah. the, the, the more you equip onto your essentially robot shell, uh, the heavier mm -hmm. you are, and certain movement options afford you more weight capacity than others. And if you are overweight, certain movement options give you a severe speed penalty, whereas some kind of just shrug it off and say, eh, whatever, you're fine. Um, so there's a lot of very little different crunchy-ass systems involved, which I love me some crunchy-ass systems, so oh yeah. It's, oh yeah, it's definitely there for me. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so Cogmind, very cool. Already been playing it for three weeks, gonna give it a fourth, possibly a fifth, depending on how we're feeling at the end of next week. Oh boy, okay, so on the Shmup Book Club side of things, SBC, our new Shmup for the month of February is Gigawing. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a, a Shmup of numbers, and the bigger those numbers get, the better you're doing. Because, as uh, I'm going to partially quote EI on this one, because he has a very good perspective on it, is it's if you, Gigawing is if you gave your scoring system several other sub scoring systems. <laughs> Which that is a, sounds like a schmop. Yeah, I mean, this one especially, though, because the numbers are, let's see, the, the highest score I've seen, and I don't really look around for scores, is, let's see, 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15 digits, I think. Um, okay. So that's a, lot of, that's a lot of digits. It's a lot of digits. Um, but it, it runs Billions. the gamut between, yeah, it, it runs the gamut between uh, that and uh, and and somewhat low scores too. So like, you 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 get medals to improve a multiplier, which acts as a multiplier to other multipliers, and then you kill shit, which gets multiplied by multipliers by multipliers. And so it, you can see the score just inflate beyond all belief eventually if you're good enough. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun. It's fun and flashy and does what a shmup should. There you go. Our uh, quarterly for January through March is still going on. That's Tokyo Gorontai. Um, I like it. I played it uh, for this past week on Thursday's SBC night. Uh, I'm not very good at it, <laughs> which is not really saying much because I'm not very good at a lot of these shmups, but it's fun enough to keep playing. And then our other quarterly for December of last year up through the end of February this year is G Darius. Uh, so it's mm. a very standard darius-esque game a darius series game lots of various say, gee i wonder why yeah exactly right lots of very curiously named enemies and very aquatic undersea themed enemies too despite being in space most of the time um so it's quirky space whales all right more or less yeah actually <laughs> <laughs> okay cool F4. Uh, but it is fun it is fun and, and funny and it's it, it's always a good time because i get to make fun of the dumb ship names and I don't know, it's just fun. Uh, Sunday Long Play is almost exclusively Dead Cells now for me at this point. Um, cool. This is a game I played a long time on stream, like three-ish years ago now. Um, and has released three, four major content packs and or DLCs in between uh, since last awesome. time. So there's a lot to go through. Uh, another game that's, to me, very fast-paced. I would probably do better if I slowed down a little bit, but it's just so damn fun to go fast. So uh, I'm gonna keep going fast and and doing bad, I guess. Um, but looking forward to giving that more time uh, on Sundays coming up here too, as well. And then finally, oh boy. So uh, I don't remember last time if I talked about this. Let me actually look back. When was our last show? The fourteenth. Yeah, it was the fourteenth, right? So we must yeah. have we must have been doing this. I'm gonna actually quickly peek back at the notes from last time to see if I actually mentioned this and brought this up. Well, um, I remember participating in something that was not this large. <laughs> no, no, I guess I never brought this up. So, anyways, so the the backstory to this is it's a multi world, right? Uh, um, we've played we've both played multi worlds now. Um, 
which you participated in in one of the one of the smaller ones that we did, which is great, great. It's always good to see new new folks do that stuff. Um, so we did a four player twenty eight world multi world last month. Um, but not all at once. We did it in an asynchronous fashion over the course of about a week and a half. So okay. fo folks would pick up their games, play them, send their items to people, and the next next time a person logs in, they get the items sent to them, really. They, they receive the items that are kind of queued up for them. And that worked pretty dang well. Like, that was a little test run to see if it, if it works okay. And it, and it does. To its credit, it works very well, considering, uh, like, all the weird jankiness that is involved with these, you know, two and a half decade old games that are involved in, in some of this stuff. Um, yep. so as of yesterday now, we have started up an even larger one. Yeah, um, <laughs> a certain Tom was telling me about 12 seeds of something. Come on. Yeah, so, uh, in total, the one we just started up last night is 10 unique games, 10 people, 10, 10 unique players, 62 total worlds across all these 10 games, and 9,229 items across all of those 62 worlds. Uh-huh. So the I'm breakdown... Eight LTTPs and four Super Metroids, but I'm sure there's eight more games worth. Oh, yeah. There is definitely more. <laughs> so the breakdown is as such. We've got one VVVVVV. We've got one Minecraft. One Time Spinner. One Subnautica. One Factorio, four Ocarina of Time, six Rogue Legacy, eight Risk of Rain 2, 19 Super Metroid, and 20 Link to the Past for a total of 62 worlds. Uh, so, Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It took uh, about 54 minutes to generate that entire world, that entire multi world. Um, and yeah, our target finish on this is the 11th of March, so four weeks from today. Um, but based right. on how aggressively we played the the last smallest one, that was about a week, um, I expect we're going to be finished well before that. Oh, but still, it is uh, it is definitely something. In fact, for this one, I wrote up a little Discord bot to scrape the the server logs to keep track of items flying back and forth. Uh, so I've been watching that actually tonight <laughs> as I've been glancing off to the side here, just seeing the items just fly by. It's funny. Just so, just to help people keep track of what's going on. Cause you can imagine, like you said, you know, Tom is playing 12 of those 62. I am also playing 12 of those 62. Uh, so okay. You... What's your spread? So my spread is for each of <laughs> Link to the Past, Risk of Rain 2 and Rogue Legacy. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's a nice balance, I think. Cool. And and I, I've found, and I'm sure anybody else who's who's done something as frankly silly as this can attest to, it gets a little hard to keep track of uh, what you got left to do, um, especially as you're coming back to these over the span of multiple weeks. So, mm -hmm. you know, this this Discord bot that I put together has been holding up pretty well, <laughs> considering. Um, but it is very very fun, and hopefully we can con convince more folks to join uh, for the next one because I'm almost certain there will be a next one. Oh, boy. But I think that, uh, that comes to the end of the stuff that I've been playing since last time, um, besides some odds and ends that are are worth mentioning, but I won't bother because we've been going for you know half hour on this segment already. So Okay. I think it's time for some more tune skis then. No, no, no. No? No. No? I, I still need to talk. Oh, what? <laughs> Oh, right. I played sorry. games. Oh, I'm sorry. I usually <laughs> go second on these, which is why I... Uh... Yeah, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Please proceed. It's okay. <laughs> so, speaking of uh, multi-worlds, and I guess I'll say the archipelago word, too, uh, I, I did participate in something that happened the day after our last show, I think. Or is it two days after? No, it was two days after. Yeah, it was um, the, it was I played Sunday. just a bog standard uh, Link to the Past randomizer um, I don't really play that ever outside of marathons that we produced in the past. So I was like six hours in and it was like, okay, I've got swamp turtle rock and ice palace left to do. And I, I I'm good. I'm tapping out. 
So after about six and a half hours of just like not moving, um, kind of hunched over on a spare bed at Eon's house. Hmm. Um, speaking of, she participated too. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm good. And then I, I pushed the little, you know, I don't know, forfeit <laughs> button or something like that, where it just like spews the rest of the items in the seat over to everybody else. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that was good. Yep, I was fine. So yeah, I got that all working. That was not all that bad of a setup. So that was cool. Um, also played some Wii Sports Resort. Oh, shit. That brings up some news. Crap. I forgot about Switch ah, Sports. Right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which will be releasing more sports as um, free DLC later on. But yeah, that that sounds cool, I guess. Um, wear your wrist straps. But anyway, go check that out. I'm not going to talk about it right now. So Wii Sports Resort. Yeah, we played some golf. I had to relearn how to hold my Wii mote to play golf. Um, which I was okay by the end yeah that was fine uh played some bowling and granted this was with vlad mr Bump. so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh this is when we visited this last time for the last show obviously we, i'm not in mr Bond's basement right now so right. i'm not there see, such. but uh yes ooh. um but yeah we played some wii sports resort and had some real great nostalgia across multiple states of visiting people and yeah it was a good time and then, of course, I had mentioned the Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster, which it takes a while to grind levels in that game. And there are two, like, super bosses in that game that I just don't feel like fucking around with. Um, I did manage to get the last Crystal Shard, which gives you the Mimic job. And I had to remember, like, okay, what's the gimmick with this go-go fight? Because it's stupid. <laughs> um, right. And basically, I was just, like, slamming my head against, okay, I'm doing, like, 6,000 damage a hit, several hits, I'm hasted, and everything else, and I just get obliterated. And I remember, oh, yeah, there's dialogue I'm supposed to read. Right. Right. So the gimmick was, of course, mimic the enemy and the enemy's not doing anything so you're supposed to not do anything you let several turns go by and then you win so yeah did that um and out of spite i mastered the mimic job with everybody um (laughs) not that it did me a whole lot of good but yeah i'm in my i don't remember what level i'm at honestly um 60s 70s shrug um yeah i accidentally went through the last dungeon not realizing it was the last dungeon. And I got to like I seeing X death on the screen. I was just like, oh, oops. And then backtracked all the way back out again and then found the tablets and the last 12 weapons and et cetera, et cetera, because I had some content I want to finish or finish. So I'm at the point now where the final stream of the game is going to be basically going through the final dungeon, skipping all the chests because I already got them, with the exception of one of the super bosses. Fuck that. And just uh, mashing A on the final battle and making it die. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that that's pretty much going to wrap that up. As mentioned in the past, uh, Final Fantasy VI coming out on Wednesday the 23rd. Yes, I'm uh, going to be throwing a lot of time into that. Very curious what they did. Uh, I will say, though, that so far, all of the games do not have, like, optional extra dungeons like the GBA release has had for these. So it's been very vanilla content so far. I don't anticipate FF6 is going to be any different. Um, Yeah, I'm going to take my time and play the game like I normally play it, I guess. And I'm going to, of course, try to see if the sketch glitch is a thing and Vanish Doom is a thing. And (laughs) they're probably both not a thing anymore. So that'll be a little disappointing. but yeah, what I'm especially looking forward to, though, with these pixel remasters is people modding them. So I haven't even looked at all to see what's on Steam Workshop for any of these yet, but I'm sure there will be. And I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be good shit. Uh, I'm very excited for randomizers to start targeting these instead of just the base games and whatnot. So I don't know. I think it'll be fun. So since you've but, played way more of the pixel remasters than I have at this point beyond one. Yep. <laughs> right yeah have you had to do any fudgery with the fonts like uh previous every time okay oh no (laughs) no it's actually really easy so i ended up before i even like downloaded any of them 
uh, there was already discussion going on because the font that comes with the game is ass. Mm -hmm, It's basically mm -hmm. the same as the one from the mobile release, which is the super ultra narrow, hard to read font because it's just it's like pixels thick. So, um, yeah, that wasn't a good time. So I found somebody who replaced the font assets with the font from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I was like, yeah, this is a classic RPG font. Sure, why not? And I've just been using that this entire time. It's the same two files go in every one of the games, and it just does the thing. Okay, good. I was hoping that they had learned their lesson between some of the remasters to fix that on their own, but it sounds like they did not. Honestly... I don't know, because, like, I didn't even bother looking (laughs) in FF5. I was just like, fuck it, and just replaced the font, so... That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, so, eh. Uh, But I have maxiquest.zip for you if you are interested in using the font that I've used. Uh, I've already got whatever the FF Silver one was. uh, That seems to work okay, at least for FF1, so... If it's just the same copy between them all, it's not too too much of a pain. It's the same location in every one of the games. Very so, good. Yeah, do the thing. Um, but yeah, no, every every one of the pixel remasters that I've played so far have been really solid. So I can only assume that FF6 is going to be great. I will obviously let everybody know next time because I'll probably have played the game at least once through by the time we have our next show. That'd be a great way to uh, celebrate round 100, though. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. With one of your most favoritest games, I'm assuming, at this point, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so now, Tune Skis. Very good. Okay, yeah, sorry. I just, I'm so used to going second in these segments that it's just like, oh, yeah, let's just go with Tune Anyways, yes, Tune Skis, uh, part two. First off, the remix from Sonic the Hedgehog 2, entitled Dark Waters by McVath. Then a remix from Super Mario World, entitled Underground City by Neon X. And then finishing off with a remix from Castlevania 2, entitled Simon's Epic Symphonic Quest by Ben Oz.
All right, we're barreling into the final segment of the show, uh, some ad hoc design. As we do. Let's make a game.net slash game idea generator. <laughs> All right, I'll do the needful here. Oh boy, what sort of problem are we going to create for ourselves today? All right, you ready for roll one? Mm-hmm. Lay it on All me. All right. All right, we have two genres, one rule, one setting, and one theme. You ready to go? Okay. All right, genre number one is a top-down shooter. Mm, all right. I like the sound all of right. that. All right. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for this one? Oh, maybe. <laughs> genre number two, visual novel. Huh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hmm. All right. Okay. The rule is you are the weapon. Uh, okay. The setting is Western. <laughs> All right. And finally, the theme, treasure hunt. Treasure hunt. Top down shooter, visual novel, you are the weapon, Western treasure hunt. Uh huh. Wild. Okay. Like the big clash here is those first two, really, in my mind. Top down shooter and visual novel. <laughs> like, how in the hell do you mash those together? Uh, right, all in a high school and call it good? I, right. Oh, boy. I mean, that, that's, that's visual novels right there. It's, Explore the ass world that is high school. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not feeling this one, and it's not because of the visual novel part. It's just because this one doesn't seem very strong. But uh, no, I mean, like it kind of writes itself in my mind, but like it doesn't really have a lot of substance to it. Yeah. So, all right, on to roll two then, huh? Yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, I'll go pushy this button here. Uh, hmm. Okay. Curious to see how we can make this one work. One of each. Okay. The genre is hack and slash. I, I, okay. The rule is entire game on one screen. Hmm. All right. The setting is post-apocalypse. <laughs> All right, well, that writes itself. Uh-huh. And the there. theme is myth. Myth. Ha. Ah. All right. Phew. Well. Hmm. Okay. I've. Yeah, I've already got ideas on this one. So that's okay. that's better. That's better, I think. Um, how how are you feeling about this combo? I kind of want to hear what your idea for the entire game on one screen bit would be, because to me that feels really limiting. But maybe limitations are a good thing in this case. But I just I'm not getting the ideas flowing for this. Yeah, it it is. Um, that's probably the one bit I don't have a very clear picture about. Like the other, like the genre, very easy. Thematic element, quite easy. Post-apocalypse is just, all right, 100%. Like, just fucking lob it up, softball type thing. The one screen uh -huh. bit is kind of hard to make that gel amongst the other things, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but the real question is, do we go with this and try to try to hash that out, or do we throw caution to ye win and um and and go with the third roll let's be gamer of the winds and push the button okay here we go rng this is the one we're stuck with now folks because we do three rolls and if we don't like them we don't like them all it's we're stuck with the last one okay <laughs> two dramas this time one of each other text-based Okay. 
and rhythm. Huh. Mario teaches typing. I All right. Chipper. Okay. <laughs> the rule is no one can see you. <laughs> okay. The setting is medieval. <laughs> All right. And the theme is battle of wits. Okay, that one actually tracks. Okay. Uh, text, so interesting. Text-based rhythm. No one can see you. Medieval battle of wits. <laughs> so, ah, uh, shit. I forget the name of it. You ever have? I don't know. I've talked about this several times. Did you ever have the Microsoft Encarta? encyclopedia oh yeah the little adventure click and point thing yeah 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 making that a text game and you are i don't know some incorporeal thing and you have to get your body back or something or you have to be alphonse and be trapped in a suit of armor eventually or something i don't know man but okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hmm. No, okay. I, I, I like the starting point to that. That's that's good. Um, I'd probably hinge more towards actual ghost, ethereal, incorporeal. I think, because that's, yeah, that's totally cool. Because that's the like of these five things, the no one can see you bit stands out as kind of the wrench here. It's what? like all right, text based. You know, fine, whatever. Rhythm, cool. Medieval, yeah, battle wits are right. No one can see you. Well, okay. How do you convey that in a text based game, really? So just make yourself I a mean, ghost. <laughs> or or mm. um you could be a sorcerer and communicating to them telepathically or something. Or you could be like the Wizard of Oz and you know be the, the dude behind the curtain or something. Okay, yeah, no one can see you. Medieval Battle of Wits covered there. Text-based rhythm, though. How the... How the heck does that even apply? Not even with that particular setup in general, or, or in specifically, but in general. How the hell... Text-based rhythm. Yeah, so text-based, to me, kind of limits it to being something that you would interact with with a keyboard. Right, yeah. So... Naturally. Um... Like it's almost... I, I'm trying to think of. Go ahead. Uh, there's like if you take this very literally and say, "Oh yeah, text-based rhythm." You said Mario teaches typing before, like <clears throat> like a typing tutor is like, "Hey, yeah, keep your words per minute up," type thing. That's sort of rhythmic to me, but maybe not in such a way that would apply hmm. very well here. So. Ooh, now I'm thinking of Loom. Okay, yeah. So, like, you cast your spells by learning the right sequence of letters and then doing them in time. Now, that's not necessarily, like, a certain rhythmic cadence. It's more like keeping the tempo kind of thing. But you could make it a rhythmic cadence, and that could provide your rhythm. Okay, so perhaps the faster and more... and the faster and more consistently you type in the spell, the better, the more effective it is, perhaps. So I'm wondering now if we could do something like you uncover spells by means of learning about the thing that you're supposed to be answering to get through this floor of the dungeon or something like that. And the prize that you get after doing all of that research and putting things together and solving riddles and whatnot is here's a spell type it with this kind of rhythm or something like that. And in the spell might not even be like words or something like that. It could literally just be random characters. Sure, and sure, sure. It has like notation on the screen. So it, I guess it kind of assumes that you'd be able to read notation. But I mean, like it would play back your PC speaker or something like that. Yeah, I'm getting a very like metronome-ish vibe here. Yeah, kind of, because like, I mean, like, it would kind of keep beat going and then, like, mm -hmm. it would have, as it dances around, like, 
you kind of get a feel for where you're supposed to like actually make the input kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and kind so of like okay. So kind of akin to bringing up the pause menu in Ocarina of Time, like you could see a list of your spells, aka warp songs, um, and be like, okay, this is the notation, so you can actually see like what the rhythm is and what the letters are and things like that. Okay. And I sort of kind of I kind of see this as like you were mentioning before, it doesn't necessarily have to be actual words, but more I see this as more like patterns around a standard yeah. keyboard. Like, oh hey, here's a here's a pretty easy spell. This is home row, regardless of what your yeah, home sure. row happens to be, right? And more complicated ones are like, all right, alternate left and right hand in this sort of pattern, um, whilst keeping the beats or maintaining a minimum speed or both or whatever. And then they just kind of balloon up in difficulty from there. Do you want me to like throw you a bone here and uh, be like, hey, this this could be used as a way to teach how to use Dvorak or it something? Really could be because it's built go. around lefts and rights and alternating, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, honestly, like you, huh? You you could change the uh, keyboard mapping and then actually use it for whatever the hell kind of keyboard could. Like mapping if, you want. If we're not constrained to literal words, right? We don't uh, need to like be very restrictive in in what sort of patterns and and cadences these these typed out spells go to, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And I could see throwing in like a practice mode or something like that, or not even a practice mode, but like. I, I don't know, some mechanic where you can bring up the menu and, like, actually learn with proficiency how to type slash cast the spells appropriately so you don't mess up. Like, definitely there would have to be a mechanic where if you botch something, something bad happens. Mm -hmm. Or an unexpected effect or something like that. And it's just kind of like using a wand without knowing what it is right. or something like that. So breaking rhythm or uh, mistyping spell equals bad stuff although Happens. so if we make these randomly generated probably um spells kind of like what they do in loom um we could kind of like we could use a pattern that people would be able to kind of like see what the pattern is after a couple spells so that might encourage them to try things to see what would happen so we'd probably have an engine in there to interpret input and be like, okay, is this going to be something? Is this going to be close enough to something that they learned something mm -hmm. or something? I don't mm -hmm. know. It has but a it's very matching. Yeah. Yeah. It has a very, like, I know edutainment is somewhat of a dirty word yeah, here yeah. because the, like, it was really low effort shit back, way back when. But it does have kind of an edutainment vibe to it where it could actually work. Yeah, maybe. And honestly, I think it's not bad. Like, it'd be a lot more engaging than a lot of the shit that I used to do. Right. I remember the Mavis Beacon of whatever, and it's just like, oh god, Don't <laughs> kill me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's still a thing, by the way. Is it? Oh, I and can't I'll, believe it. I'm gonna it. look it up. Mavis Beacon. Actually, no. Oh, I can believe it. I just uh, can't imagine subjecting anyone to that and nowadays. They're on stable release 20. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oof. Uh, Although they had games built in, so that's kind of neat. I so apparently something. there was car racing. That's neat. Uh, Shit, what is the latest version, though? Uh, Like, when did it get released? I need to know. I feel All like... Right, fine. MavisBeacon.com. Let's look. I feel like early 90s. Anniversary edition early 90s. Oh, they're, yeah. If they're on like 20, release 20 or something, I guess early 90s, but... No, it, it was actually released back in the 80s. Oh, really? Um, Holy shit. Yeah, I was just wondering what the latest one was and when it was released. Incredible. Alright. Powered by Ultra Key! Okay, yeah, sure. The all-new typing game zone. Oh my god. <laughs> this is great. I am already nauseous from just hearing that. As low as thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, it's still published by Braider Bun too. Ah. Awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Classic. I'm actually kind of happy to see that company still around. 
Anyway. All right, so our medieval times typing teaching game. <laughs> uh-huh. Ba battle of Wits. What can we do about the Battle of Wits? Well, I mean... Yeah, like, learning is already wits, kind of. There has to be... Oh, my God. Okay, so there has to be an antagonist of some kind. Right, yeah. And what if you had a a type-off fell battle and <laughs> really felt like Parappa the Rapper? Oh. <laughs> Rhythm and spells and dissing and... Oh, my God, that'd be great. Medieval... Throw down. I want that. Okay. <laughs> Challenge your rival to a spell battle. Keep your rhythm while <laughs> spitting out hot fire to the beat. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just trying. Yeah, I, I, oh, big shrug. And like, because it's medieval and dragons might be a thing, like you could be channeling a dragon or some shit. I don't know. Well, channeling mystic powers and or a dragon by typing <laughs> oh my oh no oh uh -oh. shit i have a title like for this thing idea has struck oh good titles are the worst so <laughs> lay it on me are you ready for this yes i am all right the title is two words it is keyboard warrior Oh boy. Maybe I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Unironically, uh, but kind of ironically. I it, don't know. No, it works. It 100% works. Yep. We're keeping it because I don't want to try to think oh, of a different one. Uh, okay, well, in inventory is really spells you discover as you go along, right? Yeah, not realistically. Oh. And it really kind of is edutainment because, like, you synthesize the answer. Right? Oh, 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 good pun. <clears throat> uh, you synthesize the answer by going through and finding riddles and clues and eventually getting to, like, the ultimate answer for, like, hey, this is what this thing is. And then you barf out the song or put the mm -hmm. clues together to make the song and then do 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 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Then the killer solo comes up, and you hit 100 words per minute, and suddenly you... <laughs> sure, why not? Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, based off of all of that, the only blank spot I've got here still is story slash hook. Even though we kind of already covered that, but we didn't really give much of a background to it. Your village got... I don't know, raided, and you were thrown into the dungeon, and this is the only way out, or some stupid shit. I don't know. Okay, hey, I'll, 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 I'll go with that. You tried to raid the castle and were caught, and the only way out is to prove that you learned something. Or you learned your lesson, <laughs> whatever. Use, yeah. use your wits to escape. And, uh... And battle your rival, I guess, huh? Sure, why not? To recap. To regain the honor of your pillaged village. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> that gives me ideas for more games, but eh. Oops. That's not that's too much to delete there. Okay. Alright. Uh text-based rhythm, no one can see uh, no one can see you. Medieval Battle of Wits. I don't know. I think we covered all that well enough. <laughs> this was something to try to uh, hash into a workable game. Yep. I, I think it was adequate. <laughs> yeah. Keyboard Warrior. Yeah, that, that tracks. That tracks. <laughs> all right. Well, we've then we've come to the end of uh, insert credits round ninety nine here. Anything further we need to impart to the crowd? Otherwise, we can wrap uh, for the evening. Thanks for joining us on our last adventure in the double digits. Oh boy! And we'll yeah. see you next time with round one hundred. Oh boy! Hundred! Holy shit! We've been doing this yep. for a long time.
a long time. All right, now you have me looking again. <laughs> <laughs> you can just look at the, the list of folders for our show notes to get an idea. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, okay, we started in 2014. Actually, no, we started earlier than that. Yeah. And that was just when they were copying into Drive. The... Well, insert yeah, credits we started in 2014, because we've got notes all the was way it? back okay. to round one, yeah. But yeah, definitely prior yeah. to that was... Uh... 2013 was Journey 3. I don't have yeah, I don't have anything earlier than that saved up here. Yeah, so. okay. Probably 2011, go. 2012, I'd say. Sounds good. Easy. It's been, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a very long time, yes. Over a decade, in fact, probably, I will go out on a limb and say. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, ooh, ooh. A, a large measure of time for anything like this, so. That's that nice. A fair bit of a chunk of my life there. Yeah. All in notes and recorded and oh god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go back and listen <laughs> to the very first one and uh, hear how much has changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, hmm. Are you not entertained? Oh, or or don't. You know, it's up to you. I... Or don't. Uh, apparently I had watched Sonic for Hire shortly before that time because avocado was the thing yeah for round eight mm -hmm. so there you go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool all right I i'm done all right very good well then we're gonna wrap for tonight uh thanks as always everybody for watching and or listening i am mr bond and i'm tormod leave you with our typical closing track a remix from mario kart wii entitled wind in your hair by overclocked university good night everybody